On this week's show, the Georgia Southern football team has announced their new offensive coordinator, Bob DeBess, who comes from New Mexico. We'll have analysis. We'll also let you know how the Georgia Southern men's and women's basketball teams are doing and have some highlights as well. All that and more as we welcome you inside the Eagle's Nest. Welcome inside the Eagles Nest. I'm your host, Josh Aubrey, being joined by Mike Anthony, sports editor and Georgia Southern beat writer for the Statesboro Herald. And another week comes and another coordinator is hired. Thankfully, this happened uh, prior to us being able to do the show, Mike. And uh, we were bringing in a guy that people may not be too familiar with, but he has some ties to an offense that was very successful here with Willie Fritz. We've got... The man, and his name is Debess. Debess. We got Bob Debess coming in from New Mexico was was his last stop, and uh, he kind of implemented the offense that Doug Roos tweaked to his liking and brought with him to uh, Georgia Southern from Sam Houston State. Yeah, coming from New Mexico previously, he was Willie Fritz's offensive coordinator at Sam Houston State, but before that. Uh, upwards of 30 years coaching experience a lot of it at the highest levels of college football not just FBS but he spent about 10 years in what are now power five programs Uh, a couple more at a school TCU that wasn't a power five then is now so he's no stranger to very good programs that expect to win and as you said with the offense that was last seen running rampant in uh, 2014 and 2015 for Georgia Southern hopefully he brings something that looks about like that, and more importantly, scores about like that one did. It seems like the problem over the past few years has been bringing people in, wanting them to run some form of Willie Fritz's offense, and none of those people had the backgrounds to do that. It looked like they were going after Atkins at Tulane, who was their offensive line coach, who did have some experience with that. I don't know if things just didn't work out there or or what happened there, but... With the best, you get a guy who comes in who has called plays before, whereas if you would have brought in Atkins, that was still kind of a question mark on his resume. Yeah, you look at the names that were floating around for who could be the offensive coordinator, and you know you heard some names like Mitch Ware, uh, uh, Chestnut at Kennesaw State, and I, I think that I like the direction that they went in finding the best. Not that there's anything wrong with the other candidates, but if Atkins was the guy, as was rumored to be the number one choice of the coach, uh, Chad Lunsford, then I like the fact that if he couldn't get Atkins, he went and got someone who is similar, who came from the same offensive system. That tells me that it's not a shot in the dark. It's not going for a name. It's not trying to please the fans by getting someone that they might be happy with. It's getting someone that best fits what he wants to do next year. Best fits? That's a pretty good one there. Well, Mike, I think it's going to please a lot of people with the flex bone uh, option that they want along with some people who want to see them pass more. It looks like his offenses when he was at Sam Houston, when he was at New Mexico, have been able to show that they can throw when needed. They are also have led the, the country or been in the top five in the country in rushing every year. Right, they definitely know how to move the ball on the ground, put points up on the ground. And then I think as far as the passing game goes, you'll see something kind of similar to what Georgia Southern did this year where they try some short passes to help open up the run game, but they're not afraid to send multiple guys downfield, not like the under center flex where you maybe try to catch someone napping with a a go route, but there's times where they'll line up with three and four wide receivers and really try to stretch out a defense and hit them over the top for a big play. All right, well, shifting gears a bit, let's go back indoors where the Georgia Southern men's basketball team continues to roll. Big, huge win on the road this week. Uh, with a perennial power in George Mason. But before that, they were home once again and really showed out for the home crowd, scoring over 100 points in their victory over Savannah State. Yes, Savannah State, you knew it would be a shootout. Uh, The Tigers shoot more three-pointers than just about anybody in the country. And I guess Georgia Southern wasn't content to just beat them. They wanted to beat them at their own game, end up shooting 10 more three-pointers than Savannah State does. They outperform them in all facets of the offense. They, uh, they get to the hole. They get to the free-throw line. 
They score 30-plus points from behind the arc. That's how you get it done. Savannah State just couldn't keep up with Georgia Southern. Right now, when they're playing their best, there's not too many teams out there that can keep up with Georgia Southern. Yep, so let's get out and take a look at some of those highlights from the Savannah State-Georgia Southern game from this past weekend. An early Christmas present for those who like to watch three-pointers fly. Georgia Southern and Savannah State, the two teams combined for 62 attempts. Early, they were both hitting Jake Allsmiller. Then it's Tukey Brown on the other end. Dexter McClanahan in the corner for three of his ten points. Tukey then from long distance. The Eagles up by two. The Tigers answer. Alante Finner for three, tying the game. Next, a rare two-point field goal by Javaris Jenkins, two of his 31 points. Back come the Eagles in the old-fashioned three for Tukey, the hoop and the foul. Georgia Southern back up by two, but this one far from over. Tukey, three more of his game-high 32. Allsmiller later. The fake and the three, he'd finish with 19, one of five Eagles in double figures. Savannah State then on the break. Austin Desant giving the Tigers a one-point lead. The Eagles then going way downtown. Allsmiller from about 30 feet away. Then Tukey from about the same spot with nothing but net. Georgia Southern by two. Later, nice pick and roll by Sean McConnell. On the other end, good defense as Monte Glenn comes up with the block. But the Tiger is able to get it to Jenkins for three. The back and forth would continue most of the game. But in the long run, Tukey and the Eagles proving to be too much. Georgia Southern wins a shootout 102-91. to Hey, Ms. Thompson, everything's fine. It's gonna be no problem, I'll have you done in a few minutes. My name is Paisley Nordhaus, part owner of Complete Car Care, and I want you to come see me. Well, the tough thing for Georgia Southern right now is they're in the midst of a six game win, uh, road swing, which included a big victory at George Mason and now they've got to go to California. They're, they're going to be on the road for a while now. This could be a, a, a key for Georgia Southern season right now to see how things go. It really will be at uh, last notice. I believe I saw a tweet this morning from Coach Byington. The team was touring the Pentagon before they uh, take a trip out to the left coast against Cal State Bakersfield. A big win against Bakersfield when they came here a few weeks ago. It would be nice to return the favor, get the, uh, get the season sweep, but after that, Logging more miles, they come back to Georgia, but only to go to Kennesaw State, go to a former SoCon rival in Eastern Tennessee State, and then the fun really starts because the last two games of that six-game road trip, the longest road trip they've had in about 50 years, and the final two games are at the end of the year, closing out uh, uh, 2017 with the first two games of Sunbelt play going to Troy and then to South Alabama. Well, speaking of Kennesaw State, that's who Georgia Southern's women will be hosting this week. They've got them and then uh, IUPUI. Indiana University, Purdue University at Indianapolis. <laughs> a long mouthful there. They've got them both coming up this week, uh, weekend, I guess. And the, the women are in desperate need of trying to get back on track. Yeah, it looked like they had found something, put something together, had won a couple of games in a row, got their record to 500. Everything looked like it was going smoothly a couple weeks ago in the Savannah State game. But then they let a lead get away from them in the third quarter. A comeback falls short. Then they take that on the road to Central Florida, have a rough time down there. So hopefully getting back home can help a little bit. They definitely need to figure out what their rotation is going to be and where their scoring is going to come from. A couple of options, but they're going to need to do more than just find the same one or two scorers uh, each day if they're going to do better this year than they did last year in conference play. All right. Well, that'll wrap things up for now. For Mike Anthony, I'm Josh Aubrey. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you again next week.